Hi everyone, this is Jody with Topaz Labs. Today I'll be showing you how you can use the basic adjustment in Topaz Studio to edit photos. We have three edits that we're going to do today. We have a simple edit, an edit from scratch, and a more complex edit. For this first edit, I have a photo from Myrtle Beach. You can see that we have some clouds right here, so we have a nice sky. We have a lot of details in the grass, and we have a lot of details here in the sand. I think we can get away with a very basic edit on this image, and we'll just be using presets that come with each adjustment. Let's go ahead and add the basic adjustment here. And let's start here with the adjustment level presets. If you click the drop down menu, you'll see that we already have a few for you. If you roll over, you'll see how they affect your image. I really like the saturation boost, so I think we should start with that. If you roll over back to your image, you can see the after, and if you click, you can see the before. We're off to a good start already, but let's go ahead and make some edits. We'll zoom in so we can have a better understanding of what's going on in all the areas of our photos. We want to see highlights, shadows, and everything in between. The first slider we'll be adjusting is exposure. This will affect the overall brightness and darkness of the image. Now, I think that this looks pretty good, kind of bright. And we also want to update the clarity slider to really get the details. I think that looks pretty good right there. Now, our shadows right here are getting a little light. Let's go ahead and make those darker, and we can use the shadow slider right here. There we go, that's looking much better. Now, if you click fit, your image will go back to fitting in the canvas in your screen. Our image is looking really good, but I think it's a little oversaturated. Let's test out what different looks we can get. If we add saturation, we can see how wild it can get. And if we take the saturation down, we'll start to desaturate the image. Now, I think this image looks pretty good with a little bit of saturation added, maybe about right there. You can now see the before and after. If you come up here, we can do a split screen and you can really see the before and after of the image. So if you're just starting out and you're not really sure what to do with an adjustment, give the presets a try. You may be surprised at what you can find and what you can do. Let's go ahead and move on to the second image. In our second image down here, you can see Beulah. She's a little brown dog and she has her portrait taken on Aperture Priority. So if we go ahead and go back to normal view and we zoom in right here, we can see that thanks to the setting on the camera, we have a nice sharp eye, a soft nose, and soft details here. We can bring this back in the basic adjustment. Let's go ahead and fit our photo back into the canvas. And let's get some more workspace going. Over here we have our one-click effects, which we won't be using. So let's go ahead and minimize that. And we'll go ahead and minimize our workspace too. Now we'll add that basic adjustment back. For this edit, I think we should go ahead and experiment a little just to see what the sliders can do. And we'll go ahead and build our effect from scratch. Let's start with the exposure. We can darken her up a little bit. We can lighten it up a little bit. Oop, too light. Let's bring it back down to about 20 just to start. Okay, and let's give the clarity a change. Let's go down and see how she looks soft. Now, let's give the saturation a try. If we go up, we'll start to add saturation. And she's obviously oversaturated here, so let's take it down. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and desaturate the image. I really like how this looks, and I think we can really perfect this with the other sliders. Let's go and revisit the exposure slider. 
and she's looking good dark. But let's take it back up just a little bit. Now, because it's a black and white photo and we're getting kind of dramatic with our overall look, I think we should sharpen the details back up. Here we can really see a difference. Now, if we go ahead and knock the shadows all the way down, we'll get some nice darks right here in the eyes and in her little nose and mouth area as well. To really increase the drama, let's go ahead and bring the highlights up just a little bit. That's too much. All right, there we go. So we just made an effect from scratch. If you like the effect and you want to save it, you can always do so right here. Now let's go ahead and bring back our workspace and move on to a more complex edit. Okay, so let's move on to the Grand Canyon. If you look at this image, you can see that it's a nice image because the subject matter is nice. However, there is a blown out sky right up here. And this is too dark in the foreground. And the background is a little bit blue and has a little bit of softness from atmospheric haze. Now this edit will be pretty complex, but very simple at the same time. The reason it's going to be complex is because we're going to introduce masking, but it's going to be easy because I'm going to show you a very fast way to do it. So for the first part of this edit, we're going to focus on the foreground right here. Let's go ahead and add that basic adjustment. And let's go ahead and start making some changes. Now we want to bring up the exposure to make it lighter because it's obviously too dark at this time. This image from the Grand Canyon has a lot of details. You can see rocks, plants, and a lot of striations all throughout. So we'll be using a lot of the clarity slider. Let's go ahead and bring that up to maybe about 50, 45. And I'll go ahead and change the shadow as well. Now we want our shadows to be darker, so we're going to actually take it down the other way. Now we're getting a lot of contrast in here, and it's starting to look really detailed and really nice in my opinion, but we're not even close to being done. We'll want to add some saturation to really bring out the reds and greens of the area. And because all of this is in the shade, it's a little too blue. You can go ahead and correct that with the temperature slider. There's a few options. You can always make things more blue, which we'll actually do later. And you can also make things warmer with the yellow side. I think that looks pretty good right there. So let's go ahead and start masking out our adjustment. For an adjustment level mask, you'll come right here. Click, and we're going to use the brush mask. Now our mask is white, so we'll be painting in black, and we'll be painting out a lot of this area up here. So let's go ahead and make our radius larger, and start painting. So we don't want to get too close right there just because there's more edge and detail. We're going to change the brush in size and density in just a moment. So when I let off of the mouse, you are going to see my mask change. So to get a little bit closer to the edge in this area, what we will do is we'll actually bring our radius down and make it smaller. And we're going to make our density not so black, just to have a little bit more blending. Go ahead and kind of paint in. And right in here. And all the way to the edge. And we're done. 
So now you can see in our first basic adjustment layer right here that it only affects the foreground. So go ahead and turn off your basic adjustment for the foreground here. Now we're going to focus on the background. The background is going to be this area back here. We'll go ahead and add another basic adjustment. And we're going to start with the exposure. I know this sounds a little counterintuitive, but we're actually going to bring the exposure down. And there's a little trick with this. Because we're bringing the exposure down, we're going to bring the clarity up. And I mean really up. Now you can really see a difference in the striations in the rocks. You can see details down in here where the river flows. And we'll go ahead and accentuate that with the shadow slider. And we'll bring that saturation up. Okay, so now you can definitely see here we have that blue cast that I was talking about earlier. We want to go ahead and get rid of that blue cast by adding yellow on our temperature slider. There we go. Now you can really see a difference. So to make this adjustment only affect the background, we're going to do the same thing here with masking. This time, we're going to use the brush, make sure you set it back to black, and we're going to get rid of this foreground area right here. All the way to the edges. And this would go a lot faster if I just went ahead and made my radius bigger. There we go. Now, if you ever mess up and you make a change that you don't like, you can always go down here to undo. Perfect. Now, I think that we are pretty good with masking in this area. And now that we have the foreground masked out on our background adjustment and our background masked out on our foreground adjustment, you can turn that back on and you can start to see the changes that we've made. So go ahead and turn those back off and we'll add another basic adjustment. For this basic adjustment, we're going to focus on this blown out sky. Now, the best thing to do is to go ahead and bring those highlights down, but not too far. If you bring them down too far, you're going to get a gray cast. So let's go ahead and keep it about 30. And again, I know this sounds a little counterintuitive, but we're actually going to bring the saturation down. And the reason we're doing that is because we're actually not relying so much on the color in the image. We're going to rely on the temperature. If you bring this down all the way, you'll notice your entire image is now blue. To get this blue cast right here in the sky, we're going to add another mask. And this time, we'll go ahead and do a gradient mask. With the gradient mask, what you will want to do is actually flip your mask. There we go. And you'll see a change right away. Now, if I go too high, we get this white right here, and it doesn't look very natural. But if I bring this down, and it blends into the line, right here of the rock, it's going to look more natural. And it's okay if that blue comes over just a little bit because remember we're shooting a landscape and there's some atmosphere going on back there. So there should be some color changes. When we're done, go ahead and click done. And you'll see we have a nice blue sky. Let's come over here and turn on all our adjustments to see how we're looking. I think we're looking pretty good, but let's go ahead and add one more basic adjustment to affect the entire image. 
we'll lighten it up just a little bit and we'll make it just a little sharper. Let's see about the shadows. Okay, and let's do a little bit of saturation changes. So here, if we use the split screen, we can see the before, which is blown out and dull, and the after, which is very clear and colorful. If a change like this is a little too much, you can always come down here to your overall effect opacity and update how much opacity is actually showing through the original image. So we just did a four layer basic adjustment edit. And I think it took us about what, 10 minutes? So if you have an image that has problem areas, try using the basic adjustment with masking. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at what you can accomplish too. That's all we have for right now with the basic adjustment. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you next time.